In this video, we're going to keep going through the SN1, SN2, E1, E2 decision. And we're going to keep asking these four questions I mentioned earlier about. Four questions are going to help you decide whether this reaction goes SN1, SN2, E1, E2. So we already talked about the type of substrate that we're looking at, whether our leaving group is attached to a primary, secondary, or tertiary carbon. And, and this is the most important question to ask. If it's primary, it's almost certainly going to be SN2. It's almost not going. It's definitely not going to be SN1 or E1. It's not going to be E2, unless there's very specific circumstances. If it's tertiary, it's not going to be SN2. So, you know, the, the tough part about SN2 is it's steric hindrance, right? So, tertiary carbon, not SN2. Then, a type of nucleophile and base. We said that if the nucleophile or base was strong, in other words, it was charged. Really, that was just a proxy for for charged. It was going to be SN1 or, sorry, SN2 or E2. And if it was weak, so in other words, neutral, it was going to be E1 or SN1. So that's one of, one of the ways to look through it. And then the next question we really need to ask now is going to be the solvent. So by this point, we're really looking at whether this, this is going to be an SN2 or E2 or if it's going to be E1 or SN1. We'll see number four is going to help us decide E1 versus SN1, but this question of solvent is going to really help us decide SN2 versus E2, usually in situations with the secondary carbon. So we've already asked these questions and now we need to sort this out. Okay, so solvent. There's really two major kinds of solvents to think about. There's really, there's polar protic and polar aprotic. And polar protic solvents have hydrogen bonding, so they have OH groups, generally speaking. So your examples of that are like water, methanol, for example, CH3, CH2OH. And you'll commonly see these as the solvents of their conjugate base. So for example, you might see, you know, Na. OH in the presence of H2O or NaOCH3 in the presence of CH3OH. So these are polar protic solvents, hydrogen bonding solvents. And then we have polar A protic solvents. Now there's in this case no hydrogen bonding, but they are still polar. They have dipoles. So examples are things like DMSO. There's also DMF, there's acetone, which looks like this. There is also acetonitrile, which is abbreviated MECN sometimes, or CH3C triple bond N. Uh, and there's also another one called HMPA. We usually don't write that one out, but that's also a polar A protoxol. Now, what's the bottom line when it comes to solvents? Well, polar protic solvents, if you remember, they decrease nucleophilicity. So they decrease nucleo. They decrease nucleophilicity. And remember, that's because of the hydrogen bonding. The hydrogen bonding around a nucleophile makes it more hindered, if you will. It makes it more surrounded by solvent molecules and less able to access that pair of electrons on the nucleophile or base is less accessible. So for that reason, in hydrogen bonding solvents, we tend to favor all things, all things else being equal, they tend to favor the E2. Tend to favor the E2. So for, if there's a question between SN2 versus E2, and you've already looked at the substrate, you've already looked at the nucleophile, and your last question is, Geez, you know, what type of solvent do I have? And if you're looking at a polar protic solvent, you're really going to be looking at an E2 reaction. Now, on the other hand, if your solvent is polar A protic, remember that polar A protic solvents, they, um, these are, there's no hydrogen bonding, so nucleophilicity is unaffected. Is unaffected by hydrogen bonding. So the nucleophiles are more free, if you will. 
so they're free nucleophiles, their lone pairs are better able to attack electrophiles. So for that reason, remember, they're going to be able to favor the SN2 reaction a lot more. So really the bottom line is if, if there's a polar aprotic solvent, you're looking at SN2. If it's polar protic, you're going to be looking at E2. It's really, you know, I would I would draw that that distinction there. Now let's look maybe cap it with a few examples to see exactly how we could work this out. So here's an example. We've already asked the major questions here. What type of substrate do we have? Well, it's secondary, right? We can't rule anything out. And what type of nucleophile do we have? Well, it's charged. Now charged, it's um, you know, it could be still at this point SN2 or E2. We, we can't rule that out. And if you remember even in the previous video on nucleophiles and bases, that particularly basic uh, nucleophiles, so with when the pKa of the F conjugate acid is higher than 12 or say, we're going to be looking, those are the situations you're really going to be looking at E2. Okay, so it's charged. We can't make this decision yet, so now we go to the solvent. The solvent here is polar protic. So having made all these asked all these questions, the third question gets us to the final decision. We've ruled out everything else. It's going to be E2. So what would that product look like? Well, remember, we're going to follow Zaitsev's rule here. We're going to remove a proton from the more substituted end. So for C3, so new alkene is going to form here. And we're going to form the alkene. Now, I could also draw out the cis product because we can have, remember, we can have trans and cis isomers on this alkene. So this is going to be the trans, this is going to be the major. I won't draw the cis, but it's also possible. Okay, so E2. Now, what if we change the solvent from CH3OH to DMSO? DMSO is on our list of polar aprotic solvents. Now, same substrate, same everything else, different solvent. So now it's going to switch over to an SN2 type pathway. That's going to be more favored in this case. So OCH3 and this becomes SN2. Okay, so just switching that solvent would be going to make the SN2 more favorable than the E2 reaction would be. All right, and then maybe just one last example. So another situation where we're dealing with a secondary carbon so we've already asked what type of substrate we're looking at. It's secondary. What type of, of nucleophile or base are we looking at? Uh, well, it's charged, so it's strong for our purposes. Could be SN2, could be E2. Last question to ask, what type of solvent? And here it is, polar aprotic. Polar aprotic, that means that really we're going to be looking at a SN2 reaction. SN2 because it's polar aprotic. And what's our nucleophile? Well, nucleophile is going to be the OH of NaOH. And so that's going to be our product. It's going to be an SN2. So again, that third question, most cases you won't even need to ask it, but it's good to know if it's there. If you've already asked yourself about the substrate, if you ask yourself about the base or nucleophile, then you still can't make a decision about whether it's going to be SN2 or E2 then type of solvent, so polar product, polar A product is usually the next question to ask.